Hey guys, Lance, LT Outdoors, and today we are going to go more in depth and talk to you about spinner baits. Hey guys, LT back here. Today our topic is going to be about spinner baits. Now let's start out with a spinner bait straight out of the package. This is a War Eagle 3 8 ounce blue herring shad is the color. A really, I myself am very fond of War Eagle spinner baits. There are tons of different brands out there on the market. I'm not here today to tell you what brand to use. War Eagle is just my go-to when it comes to spinner baits. No, I'm not sponsored by them or anything of that. They're just the brand that I choose and I, I'm confident with and I like their spinner baits. I'm going to open this package up here. We're going to pull, I'll get the package out of the way, pull this blue herring shad out. Straight out of the package. Now one of the number one things you want to look at in a spinner bait, I'm going to try to get this in the camera is to see that that profile right there is straight. Another thing you want to do is this needs to be in a V-shape. Now after a period of time of catching fish, these wires will get bent, they'll get pulled on, they'll get pulled out. Then you have your spinnerbait looking like this. When it's coming through the water column, your blades are way up here. All right. And what that's going to do is that's going to make it track funny. So an easy fix to that is just take your wire right here and clamp back down on it. All you got to do is squeeze it a little bit. I usually bring it down to where I touch the, the uh, lead head or the back of the, the uh, jig head there. And look there, it's pretty much right back in the same form. One other thing you really want to look at <coughs> So you see now that's already just bent out of, kil out of kilter just a little bit. If it's bent side to side, what that's going to do, that's going to change its presentation. A normal spinner bait's going to track along, and these blades are going to be right here. And it's basically going to move straight in the water column. Now if that wire is not straight with the hook, and I'm going to turn it around, hopefully you can see that. I don't know if you can or not, but just by me sitting here bending it a little bit, you probably can't see it that way. Let me flip it around this way. I can see it from the back side. This wire is kilted over to the right where the hook is right here. So just take it and twist it a little bit. All you're doing is just taking it and twisting it a little bit like that. And now it's already back in line. When it's bent over to the left or the right, that's going to make your spinner bait lay over at an angle and not show a great straight solid presentation. So very important you want to keep a V shape and you want to keep that tuned right in line. Now let's talk about blades. I typically only throw two types of blades, your, your leaf blades or Indiana blades and your Colorado blades. That's pretty much about all I throw. I do throw some with the hammered Indiana blades sometimes, but I really just like your general stock Indiana blades or, or leaf blades. Now, when the water is when the water is stained or dirty, or it's a very high overcast day, a lot of times I'll go to your Colorado blades. Or at night as well. One of my biggest go-tos is this one right here by War Eagle. I don't even remember the name of it. I'm sure it has an exact name, but you can see the colors in there. Black and red. It's got the single Colorado darker color blade. I mean, you can tell. You can probably see that's been through the water a little bit. It's a little warm. And look at my jig head right there. It's a little beat up. I don't know if you can see that or not. Sometimes my camera's not wanting to focus here lately. 
But I've thrown this a little bit, and it's caught me a lot of fish. I've caught catfish on this, not trying, it just happened. But notice the trader hook on there, a little bit bigger of a trader hook than I would normally use. I believe that's a two or a three aught, and I'd only use a one aught. But if the water is really stained, especially if it's muddy and dirty chocolate milk, this solid black single Colorado blade puts out a good vibration and thumps really hard and I've had really tremendous luck with it. Now if it's clear water or not quite a stain, I'll generally stick to your silver, solid silver blades such as this or silver and gold. I typically will throw a 3 8 ounce to a half ounce myself due to I fish a lot of ponds and they're not quite as deep as most waters. But if I was on the lake and I wanted to get it out and throw it out and get it on the bottom, I would go to a 3 8 ounce and uh, throw that and let it fall to the bottom. Once your line goes slack, pick it up and start trolling it, run it along the bottom slow. But for the most part, I'll throw a 3 8 ounce. I really like a half ounce a lot just because I like that bigger presentation of the bigger blades I think they put off just a little more vibration and they have a little more reflection and shine in the water column now with it being fall time the shad's busting one of the great lures that Booyah baits made is this spinner bait with the little minnow blades on it I've caught tons and tons of fish with this but I will throw this quite often notice there's not a trailer hook on there the reason why is and I'll throw them anywhere around wood or any kind of structure if there's wood or structure in there I don't want a trailer hook because you're going to get snagged and you're going to get hung up and then you're either losing your lure or you're getting aggravated trying to get it loose and it's just a pain so it's better not to throw a spinner bait with a trailer hook around any kind of wood or heavy structure like that for the most part I'll stick to a white and silver or a white and silver and black such as this I think this is just a cheap Academy brand heck I don't even remember I've had it for so long but works really well had good luck with it as well or what did I do with it it's probably staring me in the face it is my number one go-to from War Eagle the one I pulled out of the package is the blue herring shad as far as color in clear water with the silver blades I'll go to them in more translucent color something that will really match the hatch and look great when it's in the water column now if it's just a little bit stained or dirty fall time a sexy shad works really well I've had really good luck with the old sexy shad color and I'll change to a silver and a gold blade this is a small 3 8 ounce Notice the blade size on this. I'm going to try to zoom this up here. I believe that's a number two and a number three blade. Here's something else I will do that will help you tremendously when it comes to throwing spinner baits. Now, I'm no professional by any means, but I will tell you this spinner baits have been out for many, many years. It was probably one of my first artificial lures to ever throw besides a plastic worm when I was a teenager and it has really truly been a staple in my tackle box and one of my all-time favorites for many years I just like it just because it's such a versatile lure and I've caught tons of fish with them and I've had friends that say oh them spinner baits they're for rookies well I've uh, caught some decent fish on spinner baits that's all I can say now I want to talk about blade size Blade size will make your spinnerbait fishing change, I promise you. This little sexy shad 3 8 ounce here, I get the blade to sit still. It's got a, I believe it's a number two and a number three size blade. But if you're throwing a spinnerbait with smaller blades and you feel like it's tracking slow and you're sitting there burning, cranking and whining, cranking and whining, burning the crap out of it, and you feel like it's still tracking too slow in the water, Get you some spare blades and go up one size on a blade. Now another thing I will do if I want to slow it down, once your shad stops busting, 
once they start going from that fall to the winter transition and they start to slow down, I will go with a number five blade. Now what that will do is, is that will slow it down quite a bit, which I don't mind myself. I liked on, if, you know, if they're lethargic and they've slowed down, especially they'll do it with the way we've had up and down temperatures here recently in Texas where I live, I'll throw the bigger blades on, throw it out and let it drop to the bottom and sit there and let it just slow or crank it and let it run through the, through the bottom, let it through, go through the submerged grass and feel it bump and hit things as it comes across the bottom. Then if I'm not catching nothing, I'll pick it up and I'll start running a little faster. When you're throwing like a three eighths or even a half ounce with these uh, smaller blades in the fall time, is sometimes when you're throwing say a buzz bait for instance or even a whopper plopper and you're casting and casting and casting and you're not, you're not catching any fish on a top water but you can see the fish moving around real close to the top of the surface. I mean, I'll grab a spinnerbait and a heartbeat, throw it out, and keep it just right underneath that water column, right underneath the, the top of the water column, and usually they'll freaking hammer that spinnerbait. Now one thing real quick I want to show you, and that is a trader hook. If you don't have a trader hook on a spinnerbait, I'm sorry, you're crazy. The only time I will not have a trader hook on a spinnerbait is when I'm throwing around wood and structure. Now there's two ways you can do this and I'm going to show you both ways for the trader hook. What? There's two different ways you can do a trader hook? Yep. Now, you take and you put your little plastic guard right here, your little tubing that comes with your pack of trader hooks, put it around your hook. What you want to do, it's really not rocket science guys, but there are a few guys that I know watch my channel that haven't ever done this before and have asked me to talk more about this. And sometimes it can be a pain getting it right through there at first. I really don't want to stab myself with this hook. That's one reason why. I like the War Eagle spinner baits because they use ultra sharp mustad hooks. So, as you can see here, there it is. Trader hooks on there. Okay. One thing that's great is it can still slide back and forth. What I like is it doesn't move around your hook too much. It will after a little bit of period of time, so don't get me wrong on that. Anyhow. There's your trader hook right there standard. By the way, I use a one-aught trader hook. Somehow I've just lost my little clear tubing I had for my trader hooks. And I'm either blind or I can't find it. I'm sitting at my old lady's desk that she does work from when she works at home and it's a glass desk. So it's probably laying here on the glass blending right in and my eyes aren't seeing it. Alright, so let's talk traders right quick. Then I'm going to get back and show you how the other way how to use a trader hook. One of my favorite uh, traders is to use a twin tail grub. Just like this. Especially anytime I'm slow rolling across the bottom. It really works well. Another way I like to do is if I'm throwing, say, a three or a half ounce or a little bigger, sometimes I'll put a little curly tail whale. A curly tail whale? Sometimes I'll put a little curly tail worm right there, just a little short one, or a little grub worm. Have that tail hanging off. And what is it doing? It's back here turning and spinning, making reaction. And it also gives them something to bite onto. So when they bite onto it and they and they're not, you know, really getting a hold of it, then they're gonna bite and hit that hook. And one other thing, <clears throat> I know I'm kind of jumping around. This video is probably kind of back and forth all over. I apologize, I'm trying to keep it together. This is that blue herring shad that I pulled straight out of the package a few minutes ago. One thing I'm gonna do is just come through here 
and cut these. I don't like them real long. I don't like a real long skirt. But if you notice, I cut a little bit of the length out of it, but nothing is exactly straight. Nothing has the exact same cut. Just to, just to hear there, you know, cut around. What that does, and let me find one that I haven't cut yet. I know this one, actually this one I did cut. Here we go. This one's still new. I haven't cut this one. What that will do is when this gets wet, notice what that does. Your skirt's wet, all your strands are sticking together. Okay? Hopefully you can see that in the camera. But the strands are sticking together. So what does that do when you throw it out? Your skirt's just sitting there all bunched up together like that in the water. And it will not flare out, which you want it to flare out. You want it to be like an umbrella and flare out when it, hit, when it hits the water. That's why you don't have to cut it exactly the same. You don't cut a few here, cut a few there. I personally like them closer to the hook. That's just my personal opinion and my, my preference. But just cut it here, a few here, there, there, and there. And that'll make that skirt umbrella out, blow out a little more and make a better presentation and won't be all stuck together and wound up around your hook. Especially when you're throwing a trailer hook with that longer with that longer skirt, which I never did this one, it'll it'll get wet and tie up around this trailer hook down here towards the bottom. Another trailer <coughs> that I like to use and of course Anybody that's really had any experience with trailers and a spinnerbait, that's a little small paddle tail. What I'll do, I'll take this little bitty vertically havoc. I think this is a three. Uh, you can use any kind of paddle tail. I'm going to use this little small Berkeley havoc. It's a uh, paddle tail. It's the only thing I had around. But all you want to do is take that bad boy right through the middle. Bring it up, bring it on around, suck it up to that point. This isn't going to be perfect because I'm in a hurry, but Lance, that's backwards. I'm sorry, I think that makes better action, but it's on there, works really well. Now. I'm going to show you one other thing I like to do with the spinnerbait. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this skirt. I'm going to slide it back. Now, notice how easy that was to pull right off. Okay. Now I can change my colored skirt out. This is just a single Colorado blade, but now you've got a spinnerbait without a skirt. Something else that I will do, which will totally change up the, the uh, presentation. So I'm going to grab this Natural Forge Bait 4.5 swim bait. It's a little bit big. Sometimes I'll cut it since it's such a big profile. But I'm going to take it just like this. Lance, that's not how you do it. You got it on there backwards. I'm just trying to show you. Calm down. Okay. Now, very important right here. You can take and dab you a little bit of super glue around there. Don't use a ton because then you're going to have a hot mess. You want that thing all the way up to that head. Sometimes I don't want to mess up this paddle tail, but sometimes I'll even go all the way past that head. Then, what do you have? A bam! I believe this is called the uh, white ice from Natural Forge Baits. But now you've got a totally different presentation. Not only will this thump, because it's a, the Colorado blade, but you're going to have your tail back here kicking and it'll thump. Now, back to that trailer hook presentation I could show you. I don't know what the heck I did with my clear tubing for the actual hook, but. So I'm just going to have to kind of present it to you.
Take your trailer hook. Real simple, okay? Slide it over that hook. But bam. Now what you're going to do with your little plastic piece of tubing is you're going to slide it on here now and you're going to keep it right, right about here. Okay? You want it right about there. What that allows that to do, that keeps that trailer hook to where it's more versatile. So if they come up and they side swipe this or they, they swipe at it, what are you doing? Your trailer hook can turn and it has a little, just a little, you're going to have just that little bit of freedom. You're only going to come to about right there. And you're going to have not only one hook up, but you're going to have two. And I've caught a ton of fish with that right there. Sometimes I'll use a Colorado blade for the thump and have the double thump, especially if it's kind of dirty water or a little bit stained. Sometimes I will take this Colorado blade off and I'll put your Indiana or your leaf blades on it works really really well now while we're sitting here talking about it I noticed this as I picked uh, this up earlier. there want to give you just a little bonus tip here anytime you cut a line you take this spinner bait off you go tie something else on you throw it throwing later that day or Maybe the next day, man, I want to throw that spinner bait again. You cut your line, you grab your spinner bait, and that old line tie is still right there. Cut that bad boy off, okay? Take your, take your scissors, take your pliers, take your knife, your cutters, whatever. Clip that bad boy off. Reason being is that little line tie be it on right there. When you tie your other line on there, it's going to put pressure against that line and it'll cause you to break your line real easy. But anyhow guys, get you some trailers. There's all kinds of trailers. We can sit here for the next two or three hours. Twin tail grubs. I usually like the white ones. Uh, a speed crawl, solid white, or a green pumpkin, or a dark, you know, black and blue if it's you know, dirty stained water. Get you an assortment of blades. I really suggest getting the number five. The number five size blades work really well. But get you some number fives, some number fours, and number threes in your leaf blades. A couple different ones in Colorado blades and change them out and work with your presentations. I promise you it will help you catch more bass and you'll enjoy a spinnerbait much, much more. Anyhow, guys, that's all I've got today. As always, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps the channel. It helps my videos. If you're new to my channel and you like what you saw today, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.